All right. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Happy Friday. Gosh, Friday has, I mean, like the times have passed very fast. So it's like, it's like we just did our last episode and now it's Friday again. All right. So we are actually also coming to the end of May, right? And also uh, our CV or our MCO are leaving soon, right? So we all saw the news. Okay, means that no, we have uh, our dreams are opening up soon. Okay, so I hope you all like the music and uh, we're dancing with me and also with uh, the music as well. So if you like it, please help us like and share this Facebook live session, all right? Because we want to you know, have this to uplift everyone during this isolation period, right? Okay, so we have a lot more great sharings and contents coming up. So remember, please help us to like and share this live session, not open a watch party, huh? Because you know, later on, we cannot, we cannot track your questions, okay? Please like and share this session, okay? So before I begin the session, just in case you are wondering what is Ministry of Adventure about, we are actually a sports media company. We provide sports-related content and media and marketing services to the sports industry, all right? So this Facebook Live Sports Night series is one of our initiatives to support the sports industry. Well, as we know, right, many sports merchants, companies, gyms, are all being affected by the COVID-19. So we hope that um, we can all come out with this platform right, for the gyms owners, for the sports or business owners to come here to share about what they've been doing, what are the upcoming initiatives like, and also still keep in touch with you and still engage with you, right? Because we are sports lover, we are all cooped up at home, feeling helpless, right? We all miss the gyms and uh, you know outdoor adventure and stuff like that, okay? So we hope that you know like our platform can also add values to you. Okay, so if you like to find out more what we are doing, please help me to like and follow our Ministry of Adventure page. Remember to click the See First button so that you get to have a first set of information, especially right now, right? Everybody is on Facebook. It's very crowded, okay? All right, so I also want to take this chance, right, to shout out to those who have signed up as our members, okay? You are eligible to access to our care pack, get our virtual card to access the merchants, including the gyms, climbing gyms, uh, and all other sports, right? And you'll get to have lifetime access to a full library of content, courses, videos, cheat sheets, and sports information. Okay? We actually uh, consolidate the new bonuses from different uh, sports and travel industry and, and in every episode. So for you to get to get a hold of it as well. So because we want to support everyone in this uh, COVID-19, right? The total value right, was actually worth $99, $99. But now we bring down to $2, all right? Because it's just a small... I also have a small token of fee to support our staff effort la, in this COVID-19, right? Because we're all in the sports industry, we all get that this hit as well, okay? So this uh, promo is going to last till 1st June, no faster get out of it. We have more exciting stuff coming soon. So please remember, scan the QR code and register now, okay? So because we don't want you to miss it. And also good, a quick thank you to our sponsor from the Wine and Government of France. Uh, they are actually very famous in selling their bento set. Ha Chong Kai chicken and even wine. They have been also featured in uh, Channel News Asia, Channel 8 in Singapore. And I know the boss himself is very hand friendly and a uh, humble guy. He has went through a tough time. We all know the FMB right now also went through a tough time. But he's still willing to give a uh, 20% off for all his wine to the audience because so that everybody can chill at home with their friends and family to enjoy the shows and and the, the best time to that you hang out with your family. Okay. So let's do our part to support the local businesses, all right? Now, so what you can expect from the show today, all right? So the formula stories, and uh, definitely we want to find out like, how they started, and also how has COVID-19 impacted them and the changing the climbing industry. Of course, what we have been sharing today is based on their dream, okay? Not the whole, like, not representing Malaysian climbing dream, not representing Singapore climbing dream, okay? It's just their perspective, okay? And also the creative measures they have implemented to engage their climbers, so what is the new normal? People, if you keep thinking about hearing this new normal, this buzzword, huh? yeah. So what it will be the new normal for climbing industry? And uh, is there any virtual events coming out soon? Because of uh, we all know that there are more and more uh, virtual events coming out as well, huh? And also what are the advices and from them to the climbers and how can we best support them? All right. So we hope that it's exciting. If you have any more questions, they want to find out more, please also type in the chat box so that I can also bring out to ask them as well. Okay. All right, next we have, um, next we actually uh, want to also take this chance, right, to thank you everybody for coming in. Please remember to like and share this uh, post, uh, because well, next, the next part is going to be exciting. 
we got a Facebook Live giveaway package to give out today, all right? If you are our top three likes and share of the night, you get to have access to two home workout programs with guided videos and free climbing gym entry passes to both gym. Wow, all right? So actually, especially sponsored by Ministry of Adventure, we want to actually encourage uh, everybody of uh, everyone to go to climb and support the climbing business you know, once this gym are all open, okay? All right, so how to win this? Like and follow Ministry of Adventure, Facebook and uh, Instagram. Share our Facebook post and tag three friends, okay? All right, one person going climb, not fun. You must tag three friends, all right? Yeah, so we call each other, okay? And then so comment, I want to climb in the chat box so that we know that um, you are there. I mean, like, so we know who is the winner, lah, okay? All right, so, and also tonight, we have our bonus gift, all right? So if you stay till the end, the, there will be bonus gift for you, okay? The bonus gift is something very special. It's something that you can keep, you know, and, and, and use it, reuse it. And once you use it, right, this can this is gonna benefit you for the rest of your lifetime. Okay, sounds interesting, huh? Let's stay to the end. Yeah, I will announce what is the, the bonus, okay? So today our topic is climbing hits the wall. What COVID-19 means for our sports. In this case, is climbing sports. Huh? I would like to introduce you our guest speaker today, Alan, who is also a good friend of mine, and also the owners of our Zorok School. I saw his friend of uh, his fans over here as well. All right, so welcome. Uh, you all come on board to support Alan. Huh? He's very open. He's a very open and supportive guy. Hello, thank you for supporting as well. Yeah, Alan right, actually has a very strong belief in nurturing the younger generation climbers. He trained and coached right, so that they can be positive, and discipline and one day be a rising stars for the nations to you know compete in the Olympic. Okay, we'll check we'll check more what is it about. Okay. Alright, so they are also featured in the New Straight Times of Bao uh and also broke the Singapore book records. Okay, so let's watch a short video clip of the rock school. So I'm I'm not sure whether there's sound, huh? Yeah, because I think there's some technical glitches. If you can't, if you hear no sound, I'll type no sound. Okay, so that we know, okay, and then we can faster fix it. Alright, so because I you know like technology right your days are heavily used, right? We also need to embrace the technology right now in part of our life or so. Okay. Alright, so if you want to find out more about the rock school, you can always go to our website, okay, to check it out. But today I get more important stuff. I want to invite my very good friend and then but before that, like, let's Give you more likes, like, 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 show your support to Alan, okay? So let's welcome Alan! Oh, I've got something to say. Hello, Alan! Well, you got Hi. today. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, I'm good. Uh, I gather all my friends to come and watch me uh, talk. <laughs> uh, hello, hello, hello to all your friends here. Yeah, great, great. Thank you for inviting uh, uh, your friends also and also come to uh, uh, join us tonight. Okay. Yeah, so do you remember, uh, Ella? Do you remember when we last met? Uh? Um, I think it was earlier this year. Jan or was it last year? Yeah, I, I, I think can't quite, yeah. Yeah, I think earlier this year you went for the competition for, for the U team. I think it's last year. Yeah. Yeah. That's the so last time that I went to the rock school to climb. Yes. I remember. Yeah. And also, yeah, that was like that sounds like ages, right? Because it's like this COVID nineteen is like so long. <laughs> yeah. It's like yeah. I, I can't wait to go climb soon. Hey, yeah, you got a lot of super fans here. Yeah. So um so actually right we we also want to also shout out also that like uh figuring I think I also want to know about like the, you also break the Singapore book records. No, the Rock School actually broke the Singapore book records for the 53 km, 53 km climb. Is that is that right? Yeah, so that was uh, in conjunction with the nation's 53rd birthday. So we had this wild idea of uh, plucking in uh, 53 km of vertical distance. So that was also in conjunction with uh, where we are situated, our Tampines Hub uh, anniversary. 
Uh, yeah, so it was quite a fun thing to do. La. The whole gym was crowded and uh, everything else. Um, yeah, so that was quite a nice event to break. Wonderful, wonderful. Wow, I guess there's a lot of climbers here also participated in the events, correct? So if you are here and then you actually participate in the event, right? You know, type a uh, break record. Uh, so that we know that you're also part of the Singapore Book Record uh, winner. Okay, that's, that's amazing. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you so much for for organizing this, Alan, and uh, it shows a lot of passion to the climbing gym as well. Okay, so today we also have uh, another speaker. Okay, he's um, actually a friend of mine also from uh, all the way from Malaysia. Yeah, but uh, we can't fly to Malaysia now or travel to Malaysia now, so we get him on the on screen with us. Okay, so he's someone that I've actually uh, respected a lot. He's also in the bit. He's actually in the business uh, for more than ten years. Right now, he's owning like five climbing gyms, and one is coming out under the brand of Camp Five, and uh, it's at one Tama uh, branch. It's at the one Tama branch in the KL is the first one they have. It's at Asia's largest climbing gym. So before COVID nineteen, right, many of the Singaporeans climbers actually travel to Malaysia to climb. Right, so we hope that this COVID nineteen over, and then we all can still go there and climb in the weekend. You know, and also we. Weekday climb at uh, the rock school weekend climb climb five right yeah so he's very kind and a uh, humble person uh, so he but I know that right now uh camp five have five gyms and it's not easy for them to to uh to handle the overheads and everything else yeah but he still show his kindness and respect to the climbers to check for them and stuff like that all right so can we have a short clip for climb five. Okay, while we are waiting, yes, let's watch. All right, so. Hey, nice hey, to meet you too. Yeah. Oh, all right. So I'm very, very fortunate and honored to to have you both. I will say the climbing gym giants over here. All right. So this is what uh, we have been like sharing to a lot of people, and a lot of people are here very excited to see both of you. All right. And, and also for to the audience here. All right. So we have Camp Five and the uh, Rock School, the uh, gym bosses over here. So if you have any questions, right, this is your chance. Because it's very rare that we have a chance right, to see them. Because in the gym, right, they're always very busy or behind the scene, right? And also, uh, if you have any questions, right, please, please ask. All right. Okay. So I will start off with my first questions. Okay. So for Jeremy and to Ella, actually, I, my first question to you is always something that I'm very curious. Jay, what motivates you guys to start a climbing gym business, and how you all started? Okay. Maybe we can start with uh, Jeremy. Okay. Uh, well, we started in Malaysia around 2000 and uh, we started with an intention um, not specifically to build a climbing gym but to build climbing walls. So we actually started a manufacturing hub out of Malaysia uh, under the brand Blocks and um, the wall at Wanyutama, the original flagship Camp 5 facility is actually built with Blocks walls. And so it was only after being in Malaysia for a couple of years, we realized that there was an, um, a need for more climbing gyms in Asia. There was a climbing gym at the time, but, um, but we saw an opportunity to build our own climbing gym to showcase our product. And, uh, and so it all sort of started from there. It, was, um, it, it got off to a flying start with building what was ultimately the biggest climbing gym in Asia, which was not what we had um envisioned we envisioned it to be big we didn't think it was going to be that big but we have to say uh support from our from one utama um gave us such a ma massive facility to fill up that's how it began yeah wow that's amazing that's amazing it's so it's not intentionally to be the largest in asia at the same it's actually actually one utama actually giving you all your the space then you yeah. just start out like that True story. Wow. True, true story. We um we asked for I think we asked for 12 meters or 15 meters, which is about what you would hope to get. Um, it's very difficult to get 
large ceiling spaces inside shopping malls. I think Alan's nodding his head, so he's aware of this. Um, so for us sort of to ask for even 15 meters was, we thought, sort of stretching the envelope. Uh, and then the owner of the mall um, came into a meeting one day and said, well, we're going to give you 20 meters. And uh, our jaws literally dropped because we sort of realized 20 meters is another five meters of wall. So there's a lot more production and a lot more work goes into that. But, you know, it was a, it was a, big, uh, it was a big challenge that we took on. And I think what we produced was not too bad. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah, it also give uh, the climbers another few readers to train to be stronger. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. great. Thank, thank you. How about you, Alan? How you, how what motivates you to start this business and how it started? Um, so for rock school wise, uh, we started actually 11 years ago, so we are not really that young, but maybe because we started off as a, a kid's business, so we, we feel that we are young. <laughs> Yeah, so um, we started from a really small place, but we had a very clear goal in mind, which is to dedicate the whole, the entire space, right, to the positive development of children. Um, so not just uh, not just climbing itself. So we are we are hoping that the place can uh, help the child to become a better person through climbing. So through this thought, um, we made the whole climbing gym uh, more kids friendly in terms of the the hardware, the walls, the hand holes, you know, those cute little holes that you have, uh, dinosaurs and animals. And and of course, to the software, um, purely from the pedagogical aspect uh, and all the way down to who we hire, uh, that can really uh, impact the kids. Lah. So we started from this way. And over the years, the kids, uh, of course, at the same time, the fam yeah, yeah, the, <laughs> we, we brought in a lot of families and kids coming to climb at our gym. Uh, yeah, so you're yeah, right. So we also started a youth team uh, at, uh, at that center at Bedok. So yeah, they, they grew up and, and then somehow they outgrow the wall. <laughs> and then we started looking for another place that we can continue to uh, support our youth team and of course to diversify our business into the uh, adults market as well. So that's how OTH, uh, our Tampines Hub uh, outlet, was uh, born. Uh. Yeah, and um, yeah, so that's that's the, the story about it as well. Hmm. Wonderful. That's that's very impressive. Yeah, the re one of the reasons, right, that I invited both of you is also because I realized that um, we are actually forming the ecosystem for the climbers from the kids stage to the pro stage, which is where you can find that this pro wall to inspire the kids to go and climb one day as so. well. Uh, yeah, so so it's a very wide range of dynamic, and I, I I'm very very happy that because uh, to see that actually climbing sports as well, are being embraced, you know, with uh, all all levels in the family and also at the different uh, ages as well, right? So we know that like uh the climbing industry has been booming uh in these few years, and people started to I think even schools right as compared to I think my time uh climbing wasn't that popular. I didn't have a chance to climb and all because it wasn't that popular and uh, right recent years getting more popular as schools actually bring it in and we can see more and more progress more and more gyms actually setting up as well however recent year uh, i think just uh, this year i think this year covid 19 has impacted and hit uh the, the whole wide world and uh climbing of course climbing gyms has uh, suffered as well uh and it slowed down the pace and just wondering right how has um uh, COVID-19 impacted you and your business. Okay, start with Jeremy. Um, okay, well, to state the obvious, we're closed and we've been closed since uh, March 18. Uh, there has been an easing, a first phase of easing, easing from Malaysia with the um, conditional movement control order. So some businesses are now open, but indoor sports facilities, uh, cinemas, swimming pools, effectively sort of public and entertainment spaces are closed. Still. So um, these um, horrible. Uh, there's no other way I could put it. It's been an amazing <laughs> challenge to to work through. Um, but I'm looking forward to the day it's over. Again. Not something that I think any gym would wish to experience or any business at all. Um, and I think it's also something that a lot of gyms probably or a lot of businesses would not have anticipated and predicted. So I think a lot of people were caught unaware and just had to deal with the circumstances on the fly, which made it much more challenging. 
Got it, got it, got it. Yeah, I, I guess um, yeah, most not not just like the cinema and the gyms and I most of the retail store are all big hit and we still have to pay. I mean like we still have everybody. to pay the overhead. Everybody yeah, everybody. Mm. Yeah, so it's like a challenge of uh, who has the most cash flow can sustain, right? So it's kind of kind of like reach up to the stage, right? Yeah. So so how about you, uh Alan? What 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 have you been through from this uh, COVID nineteen? Um, so the situation is not too much different from Jeremy's or in Malaysia. Uh, all the sporting facilities, including climbing gyms, had to close from early April onwards. So we we kind of anticipated that in mind. Uh, so the only thing that we wasn't quite uh, expecting was such a long uh, period of circuit breaker. So actually, we, we are closed now for about close to I would say coming two months or coming yeah soon. So obviously uh it has impacted us quite uh, in a very big ways. Uh, and I think what is what we really had to do was to think out of the box and had to change our business model a little bit. But those those uh those methods is not it's not you can't you can't bring us the same amount of uh, revenue as compared to open as well. So yeah, so it's really difficult. It's, it's uh, struggling, but thankfully, of course, uh, Singapore government has been like supporting us with certain uh, grants and uh, through the budget. Um, somehow we we still we still managing through all these measures, lah. Uh, but if this drag on, then I think uh, nobody is sure for anything, lah. Hmm. Right, right, right. Yeah. So one thing about the, uh, especially Singapore land is very scarce and overheads of a retail shop also definitely very, very high. It's not many business owners can sustain in that way as well. Yeah. So, so far, what was the biggest challenge that you all have faced so far right now? Uh, Jeremy? Uh, okay. Well, I, I think Alan sort of uh, alluded to that and what he said. It's a cash flow issue. Um, and 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 adding to that, not knowing when this is going to end. If if we know when the end date is, if we know what the target is, then we can we can work with the with the resources we have and spread them out as best we can to survive. But in, in Malaysia, it's been a situation of it started as a two week uh, MCO, then it got extended another two weeks, and another two weeks, and the last extension was actually a full month extension. So whilst it's you know you try to stay optimistic and you try to stay positive and hope that this is going to be the final extension um every hope has been dashed so far so odds are you know <laughs> kind of stacked against you and so i think for us the biggest challenge is um one of sort of maintaining uh keeping our head above the water uh in terms of cash flow but i think also from i would say from an emotional standpoint just trying to stay optimistic and trying to trying to continue to provide sort of a uh, morale to the team because in the end of the day, this will end. When, where, when it happens, we don't know, but one day it will. And um, it's one thing to sort of suffer uh, casualties in the business, but to suffer casualties in your staff is um, creates, just amplifies the problem. So yeah, I think it's a twofold problem of cash flow and just maintaining a sort of a, a level of optimism that you can get through it. Yeah, correct. And also for I want to acknowledge uh, Jeremy also to go through this as well because you are you actually have five gym and one more gym is coming up. It's like five babies and one more coming up. So <laughs> yeah, you know the stress level is not easy. Yeah, and yeah, you are able to the yeah, come up for this. Yeah. We literally just opened our fifth gym uh about a month before, two months before COVID hit. And in fact there was already there was already indication of the impact on you know around the time we opened. So we opened in December, and then uh, press in, in Malaysia were already um, presenting stories that Malaysian tourism was changing tack, and there was obviously a, a new agenda coming in. People were aware that there was going to be a, a, a quite a, an impact. So yeah, so it's just unfortunate that last year we built and opened two outlets, and, and then we got hit with it. So definitely not the way I would have liked to. If I was going to get hit, it wouldn't have been now. But you know, you, you don't get to plan these things. Yeah, I, I understand that, and I, I I think that right. Um, everybody didn't expect that as well, right? 
So if let's say, I mean, like with any, the gym, I mean, once it opens, right, the only way is that we everybody that's go and climb together, right, to support, to support you as well. Right, so how about you, Ellen? What's your biggest challenges that you face? Uh, we have, uh, actually we have a lot of challenges uh, way before the circuit breaker because if you remember, before the circuit breaker, uh, government says that uh, kids cannot climb and no, no classes. Uh, MOE sees their CCAs, uh, so we were already hit before that. Um, so that was, in, that was before circuit breaker. So during circuit breaker is another set of challenges because um, I see it as two ways. Like one is internal. Internally, we don't want to lay off any staff and we want to continue to pay our staff. Uh, so then it comes to what are we going to do now? You know, so we can do a lot of planning and do a lot of work. And, and at the end of the day, I think what we need to do is to be meaningfully engaged. Uh, right. So, so that is uh, one of the challenge internally. So externally, I guess we will need to think of many ways or meaningful ways to continue to make people remember us, you know, hey, we are still around uh, through social media platforms. So and even after circuit breaker, let's say we can resume, uh, we will still would need to operate at a limited capacity. So uh, yeah, it's, it's just challenges after after challenges, lah, I guess. So we just have to go through go through this together, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, it's like there's always like at the end of the tunnel, like all the saying say, let's you know, let's be positive, you know, as our leaders, and once we can go through this, you know, it's we deserve our applause. Like, everybody deserves an applause for this. All right. So talking about the point about like we just have to like think our boss and be creative and stuff like that. I guess that like, we actually have also questions about from the audience, right? How how do you all actually continue? engaging uh, the members during this uh, prolonged lockdown. Yeah, which is come out to the point of the, is there any creative measures that you have implemented? Yeah, I mean, uh, we start with uh, Jeremy first. Oh, um, well, we've sort of reached out uh, through email, through standard sort of uh, communication channels, email and through social media, uh, just to sort of let people know what's going on. Um, fortunately, we, I, I would say, and maybe I'm speaking for the greater climbing community. I certainly hope I am. I think climbers are the climbing community is very understanding, and we've had a lot of support. We've had a lot of emails coming back from climbers, just verbally giving us so much support. Um, so uh, I, I sense my my sense is that we don't have to sort of go out of our way to try to engage them. I think everyone's sort of just waiting for that day for us to open and come back. But in terms of um, revenue driving initiatives, we have actually executed a few initiatives uh, in the last couple of months. So um, placing some of our menu items uh, for online order and delivery. Um, and more recently, we sold off a lot of our old holds. So we, we've been in the business now for several years. And as you might imagine, we've sort of stockpiled a lot of holds in the back behind the wall, which don't get regularly used by the setters because they're a bit old and dusty looking. So we packaged all those up, gave them a good cleanup, and uh, and and they sold out really fast. So um, so that was a, a good initiative that the staff took on. A lot of the stuff is actually by the staff, I should say. It's actually their own initiative, their own ideas that they put to the table. Um, so yeah, and uh, we sold uh, as the prompt shows. We sold sold off a whole lot of hangboards uh, that we had in um, in our storeroom uh, or on display in the shop. Obviously, there was a lot of people wanting to buy a hangboard so they can train at home. Uh, so yeah, I think we've, we've done what we can. Um, not everything has been extremely successful, um, but I think it's again it's about the building the morale of the team. So when they come with these ideas, I, I back them 100%. I want them to sort of um, take their own initiatives and, and execute it and see how it works. That's great. Yeah, and also um, I also saw that on your website you actually have this 10% uh, off uh, for the membership for all the timers. And I feel that that's a really also a good gesture for, the, for to allow the climbers to be able to support your to tie over this crisis as well, which I think is wonderful. Would you like to share a bit more about this? Yeah, uh, that came from uh, I spoke earlier about how the climbers were actually reaching up, reaching out to us um, proactively through email, and one of the things that um, really blew me away was we had members that were writing to us saying they were willing to continue their payments. Um, 
we would we were already offering to do free uh, free extensions for anybody whose membership was um, was affected by the MCO, and we continue to promise that to all of our members. Um, but some of those members that you wrote out wrote to us directly and said, you know what, I don't need the extension. I want to continue to support Cam Five, and I'm happy to pay for that. And uh, I noticed that sort of playing out with other climbing gyms around the world, where uh, where gym owners or gym managers were, you know, having video uh, conference calls with with members and 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 sharing the ch the trial and challenge challenges that they're going through, and um, and getting really positive feedback. So from that initiative, we thought, you know, maybe we should make that an opportunity for members to support us. Um, rather than just think we have to get through this by our own means, but actually reach out to our members and say, hey, if you guys can. We didn't expect members to just shell out money for nothing, of course, so we offered them the option of either they can uh, take the 10% off uh, on, a, on a membership that they can pay for now and then utilize later, uh, but we left the option there that they can take it at full price. So it's entirely up to the individual. Um, knowing that obviously every little bit counts. So those people who have the, the possibility can pay a full price. We greatly appreciate it, but we don't appreciate any less the people who are taking it on a 10% discount. Wow, that's very nice. I mean, if the climbers you are watching this, right, this is also one of the gesture. You also can also support the climbing gym, right? Not just Camp 5 and all the climbing industry as well. Yeah, it's yeah. Just, I, I suddenly feel like it's like a family, right? We are just there to watch for each other, support each other, especially time like this. Uh, I, I can't imagine, right, there's no Camp 5 in Malaysia, right? It's like, we like there's no goals for us to climb. So this is our chance to support them. Right? So for those who actually are watching, if you would like to support Camp 5, you know, please, please, click, please click on the chat board. We have the link over there to check out what is this about and how do you apply for that. So thank you so much, Jeremy, for sharing this. Oh, thank it's you. very touching. Yeah. So how about Ellen? Actually, Ellen, right? We, uh, I mean, I just saw that uh, or your your friends, your friends actually shared about how would you recommend us to do maintain our climbing level and fitness during this period? And I know that you are actually running this uh, uh campaign about uh mask down, master up. Wow, so so cool. Can you share more about that? Yeah. Okay. So uh, maybe before that uh for the rock school wise right just like uh, any other gyms in worldwide or in singapore per se our first response of the closure was to take care of our customer first right so we want to give extensions we want to um, basically not short change any of them when they return back to us so that was our first response um, uh, so as jeremy pointed out i think the climbing community has been super supportive and many of our customers as well has came forward and say hey uh please continue to charge us during this closure period and um uh, yeah so that was like super good news for us uh. yeah so that on that part i think i just want to take the opportunity to thank uh everyone who is like uh who is who can hear this now right now uh. so thanks for your support for all the climbing dreams and rock school as well yeah okay so uh moving on uh i think for rock school we want to we, uh, we want to take care of two groups of people. So the first group is our youth team and our deaf team. Uh, so we got two groups of these uh, kids and youth. They are about 60 kids in size. So we actually take care of them through uh, giving them exercises and making them uh, accountable to it. And the other group is, of course, the wider community, and we call it the community. So they are the regulars climber in our gym. So uh, we came up with this mass down, mass up challenge also for the community as well as and anyone who wants to maintain some form of fitness during this closure period. Yeah. Uh, so having said that, uh, uh, we this this program is pretty easy to understand. So basically, you exercise, you uh, you, if, uh, you exercise, or you take a healthy meal, or you go for a run, or you go for a cycle. You submit your your exercise log and then you can basically pro progress through a, a stick and a ladder bot kind of thing like that and then they can actually win prizes in the end as they move up the bot yeah so it's quite fun for a lot of people to do uh this this program as well oh, yeah so, so then cool. this is yeah mm. is it free so for, or yeah. is it okay 
Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's totally free and uh, for the home workout, we actually have a few choices uh, of workout that you can do, something easy for a bad day, something hard if you know you need something to challenge you. So all these videos are guided in the, on the website and then uh, people can just go ahead and exercise, record themselves, submit it and then move up to board. Wow, that's like a virtual climbing race kind of thing, huh? Yeah, it's very, very mm. creative. Yeah, it, it's uh, adult can join, correct? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, actually, okay, so mm. you think? No, no, we get more adults joining this than kids, actually. <laughs> All right, so the family and the yeah. kids can join together. Sounds good. So for those who yeah. want to find out more, I have a link at the chat board as well. Click on it and you can find out more as well. And also, I, I saw your website, you actually also have your own t-shirt, uh, uh, your own merchandise as well, correct? Yeah, yeah. So this part of the campaign is more uh, driving a little bit of revenue back home. Uh, honestly, if we sit, I mean, everyone knows that we are, we are not, uh, no revenue is coming in. So this is the part that we are seeking support from the community to say that, hey, uh, uh get this from us and uh we will make sure we get it printed out after circuit breaker and uh, the 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 other side about this is that actually they can put in uh any not any amount so the minimum the minimum amount for the shirt is 20 dollars so they can you can actually pledge more so in the same light i think a lot of uh supportive climbers has come forward and pledge more than 20 dollars per shirt so that is something that uh we we managed to uh, do over this period of time and super appreciative of uh, people who have done that as well. Yeah. Wow, wow that's amazing. Yeah, at least you know the people who buy, right, can still look at the t-shirt and wear and remember the climbing walls and hand holes at home, right? So that when Jim mm. right, they can faster go and climb. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's mm. like, <laughs> sorry, you're saying it again? Oh, no, no. So the shirts actually has meaning. So like if you go into a website, you can read out more. So they actually like kind of uh, make us remember that, you know, we did it together during this period of time. And then we just want to thank you for that. So the shirts has some meaning to it. Yeah. Wow. It's like a commemorate kind of thing, right? Let's, let's put our trust, right, to overcome this invisible enemy and emerge stronger together. Right? Like a saying, say, I trust the process, okay? So, so yeah. Let me do a quick shout out to the audience as well. So for those who just come in, right, please like and share and tag three friends to watch this and comment because uh, these two amazing giants, right, really have been sharing uh, how they overcome this uh, COVID-19 and, uh, and let's see how we can show our support as well. Okay, please uh, share to more of your friends so that uh, more people can support as well. Okay, now I have my next question. Actually, uh, it's from, uh, from the floor. So, Actually, they are talking about what are the precautionary plans you have you have when you are given the green lights to open the gym again. Ah, so when meaning if let's say you can open the gym again, what are the precautionary measures? I think the public will be quite uh, interested to know this. Maybe we can hear from Jeremy first. Yeah, sure. Um, well, more recently, we've actually worked on a um, SOP proposal to submit to the government. Uh, we joined together with all the climbing gym managers of Malaysia um, and we came up with a, a risk management strategy. And in principle, that strategy took um, risk management strategies that we noted were being in, put in place in climbing gyms around the world. So there's a lot of resources which are publicly available and people can Google in their own time. Uh, there's a lot of information of what how gyms are actually successfully opening in Europe and USA. So we looked at a lot of this information that was there and assembled what we thought was, um, which were reasonable measures to put in place. Um, and they really sort of fall into stuff that you've probably heard already said, you know, numerous times on the news, which is you know, uh, hygiene, uh, social distancing, um, and uh, obviously control of safety for your staff. Um, so, and uh, I don't want to sort of go through the entire <laughs> seven pages, <laughs> but basically what we'd be looking to do is making sure that anybody entering the gym has, um, has gone through a screening process. Most, we, we were doing this before MCO, so a lot of it will be familiar to uh, climbers anyway. Uh, maybe with a few more measures in place in terms of like spacing of distancing on queues and stuff like this. 
but there'll be you know temperature screenings and uh, there'll be questionnaires and making sure that everybody who's in the gym has at least considered whether they're um, healthy or whether they're suffering any kind of illness or have any fever. And then once inside the facility, there'll be steps taken to keep the facility clean and also to maintain social distancing in the gym. And I think distancing is a really what I've seen and what I've followed in the news and uh, reports coming out of uh, CDC and uh, World Health Organization. Uh, so social distancing seems to be really the paramount concern here. I'm not, I'm not derailing hygiene. I'm not saying that's not important, but obviously how far, how far away from affected, an infected person is really critical. So um, now gyms may apply different strategies. There might be a system of um, controlling the capacity of the gym in a, a slotted time. Uh, maybe one hour, two hour slots where you actually have to book the slot so you no longer have the liberty to just turn up to the gym when you want, time when you want, but you may actually have to book. And I think a lot of gyms in Singapore were doing that again before, before their lockdown. Um, and then there'll be maybe measures taken inside the facility in terms of making sure that the climbers stay a reasonable distance apart. So that might mean removing uh, holds or ropes on the walls so climbers can't climb too close to each other. Um, closing of uh, shower and locker facilities, uh, closing of uh, changing rooms, anything that would resonate, you know, a, p a potential for close proximity uh, or, you know, or a lot of touch surfaces that people could find contamination from. Um, and then the other thing that we're actually looking to do, which is one thing we noticed uh, in a lot of climbing gyms around the world, is to remove powdered chalk. Um, now, powdered chalk, of course, we're all used to using chalk or powdered chalk in any or chalk in any form in the gym. But powdered chalk is a little bit con uh, uh, a red flag for us because we know, as I said, COVID can transmit through uh, particles that move through the air, airborne particles. So whilst it hasn't been, there hasn't been studies to actually categorically prove it, there is the possibility that chalk dust could actually become a, a vehicle for transmitting the virus. So minimizing chalk dust by basically removing chalk powder and requiring climbers to use liquid powder, uh, liquid chalk, um, I think would be a, a good safe measure to put in place. It has the offset benefit that liquid chalk, a lot of them are alcohol based. So regularly using liquid chalk would be like using uh, hand sanitizer in between your climb. So these are just some of the measures, but I, I think I, whilst we came up with strategies and we have, as I mentioned, we've submitted them to the government, um, we, we not in any position to really influence beyond that. So what the government ends up um, requiring of us, this is something that we will only know the day they actually allow us to open. Right, right, right. Thank you for, for sharing that. It sounds very detailed and comprehensive. It's, it makes it makes us feel safe as well. And uh, I really think I really hope that the government can faster approve uh, your ex, the SOP to faster to open the gym as well. Uh, I think the tentative date for MCO to be lifted is on the 10th of June, correct? Am I right? Yeah, there was a number of tentative dates in the past, so I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's hope this is uh, the last one, right? There are, there are a lot of positive signs. Um, unfortunately, most recently in the last two days, the, uh, the, the count of infected persons has gone back up into triple digits. But that seems to be isolated clusters. So um, I think that the trend over the long term seems to be quite positive. So I think there's, we remain optimistic, we remain hopeful that come the 9th of June or sometime before the Prime Minister of Malaysia will make an announcement and, and ease uh, or allow climbing gyms and other sectors to open in the next phase of easing. Uh, but again, but we don't know under what protocol we'll have to meet at this stage. Right, right. So let's stay positive and optimistic about it as well. Yeah. So how about you, Alan? Um, recently, I think uh, the community case has dropped, and but the dormitory case is always that high, right? So what is the precautionary measures that uh, the Rock School actually have? Um, so I guess I just wanted to uh, make, take this opportunity to say like the expectation is that we are, when we reopen, it's not going to be like 
normal. Yeah, so in fact, it's just uh, we are we are just going back in one step in reversal, which is what happens before circuit breaker. So what happens before circuit breaker? All the measures that was put in place will continue. So for example, like safe distancing in the gym itself. So we mark out seats that you can't sit close within one meter. Uh, we have alternate lanes open. That all this will be in place from temperature taking, contact tracing, uh, daily cleaning. So. I guess uh, we're not going to change anything. Or we're not going to break any law. Uh, we're just going to follow very closely to what uh, sporting facilities will have to do and adhere to to, to safely open the gym back. Lah. So that includes limited capacity. And then that is, I guess, that is one of the biggest concerns among climbers. So for as far as the rock school is concerned, we, uh, we are not... We haven't quite decided whether we want to go into slots or go into uh, no slots kind of arrangement. So, so we are still trying to uh, come up with that soon. Yep. So, other than that, I guess uh, because our center at Tampines is open air, so that makes things slightly easier because uh, in terms of circulation of air is 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 good. Uh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's, that's all I think the measures that we should put in place. And of course, I guess uh, parents and uh, kids training those kind of classes, we will have to uh, reduce size and we will have to continue to remind them to uh, have some form of safe distancing and wash their hands and things like that to be put in place similarly to schools as well. Yeah. Wow, thank you for sharing. Yeah, this this also especially kids, right? It's more sensitive and also the, the old people as well, correct? Yeah, so thank you both of you all uh share about this. I know that it's not easy for you and it's not definitely not easy for your staff as well. Yeah, so I also want to take this chance to share to the audience as well. If any chance, right, you you do, you do not have the same experience that you had before and the climbing dreams, right? Please be please advertise and be kind to them because this is not what they want. Right, the, the staff actually has to follow the regulations or the precautionary measures. They are doing their best. So if any ways that you are being uh, locked lock outside, you, are, you can't enter the gym because of the, the full capacity, they have to be, follow the measures. You know, please also be, they'll, they'll be advertised, or please show some sensitivity to them as well and to continually show your support. Right, so thank you. Thank you both for sharing. Oh, Vishnu was saying that, uh, strategically speaking, we are not going to be good for them. Uh, full capacity even if how do you guys see what the sports industry need to do to adapt to the situation long term? Ah, it's, it's what he's trying to say that like right, uh, definitely will take some long some time for full capacity. Definitely um the overheads is still gonna be safe or even higher, right? Because the staff and everyone else and the land cost. So how do you all um sustain your business and also what's your in long term and also what what's your view for the public industry as well? I'll start. Yeah, so Jeremy, yeah. please. <laughs> yeah. um, well, I think at this stage, it's anything is really speculative. Um, we don't really know how long this is going to last. I mean, it came on fast. It could go off fast. I remember it wasn't that long ago, if you recall, the news was actually saying that this could be all over by June. Um, obviously, that wasn't that didn't pan out. But it's hard to really make any prediction. And I think what every climbing gym will en endeavor to try to do is to um, not put the burden of the operation onto the climbers themselves. And that, that's, but that might result in, as you sort of insinuated, that might result in some you know, loss of, of use of the facility that might result in cut of times that might result in programs being sliced. Um, I think every climbing gym manager is really going to sort of enter into this with the with a um, bite in a bit. But one thing I think always to remember is, I mean, anybody who opens a climbing gym is, is entrepreneurial by nature. And, um, and I think uh, we all, we all uh, are up for the challenge. Nobody got into climbing or running a climbing gym thinking this is gonna be a cash cow business. It's a business that comes with challenges and we know those challenges quite well. These, these, new, these are new challenges, we don't know them. But I think that um, I'm quite I'm quite confident that uh, the climbing gyms will survive, and um, 
whilst I don't know how long we're going to have to maintain these measures for, uh, I don't think we need to worry about them being permanent measures. I think the day will inevitably come where we'll be able to go back to enjoying the, the liberties and, and the freedom that we once had in, in climbing. So uh, I just remain positive, stay positive. Uh, for everyone out there, as you mentioned, I think the most important thing is to just support your climbing gym as best you can by, by turning up once they open and make use of their facility. I mean, that's what ultimately will get us through this challenge is, uh, is the support of the climbers and the support of the customers. So give your utmost support and, uh, and we'll get through this together. Yeah, that's great. Thanks for sharing, Jeremy. So Ellen, what do you think about this question? What's your perspective? I don't really have a clear answer for Vishnu. <laughs> uh, so the, the thing is, uh, yeah, this, if you are in the climbing business, it's more because of passion than anything else. So if our community, if our community says that, hey, give us more fitness program to do at home, uh, keep, keep us fit at home, keep us fit while away from gym, tell us what we can do uh, in the midst of all this, then we will do that uh, and we will adapt and we will move our business model towards a more fitness kind of thing. So I guess, um, Similarly to Jeremy, we want to remain positive. We want to also adapt the business model to suit the, the current trends. And uh, hopefully this passion business of ours will sustain for the longest time. Yeah. Right, right, right. I agree with you. And uh, I think right now, is, is, uh, what, what most important is the user or the customers actually to tell us what they want as well. So we can see how we can move towards that together. Because we are in this together, it's not like the climbing gym have to set this rule and then uh, the user have to the customer has to follow. It's like it's a communal kind of thing right now that we have to go through and brace through this together. Okay? So for our audience here, if you are climbers, so please feel free to share what you want uh, from the climbing gym and show your support. How how can you help the gym right to survive more longer in the longer term if let's say this touch wood like this crisis still continue on. Okay. So please tell them how they can support you and how you can support them as well. Okay. All right, so I have a next question that's more futuristic. And uh, because with the, right now everybody is cooped up at home and with a lot of uh, experts saying, with the, and also with the booming of the esports and also VR events and people have been talking, uh, do you think this technology right, will it replace or even be complementing the climbing industry one day? And why? Maybe start with Jeremy? Ah, okay. Um... I think a complementary, yes, replacing, I have my doubts. Um, unless you can, unless the technology could somehow be uh, met together with some kind of machinery that you can actually use your body physically. But I don't think that uh, a virtual experience of climbing is ever going to completely replace a physical experience. Um, but definitely, I think there's possibility of, of, um, of complementary uh, avenues that you could take climbing. I could imagine, for example, using uh, AR technology to, or actually we see it's already happening to gamify the climbing. Um, there's also, you could use AI, AR technology or virtual technology to have a, to just heighten the experience and maybe wearing a pair of goggles and no longer you're in a climbing gym, but you're actually climbing in Yosemite on a big wall. So there are a lot of possibilities, but I don't think that sitting in an armchair and having a climbing experience is going to really give you the sense of reward and satisfaction as climbing a physical wall. Right, right, right. How about you, Ella? What do you think about this? Uh, yeah, so same take. I think technology can, also, can only re uh, replace or complement certain percentage of what we get out of uh, actual climbing outdoors or climbing in a climbing gym itself. So more specifically for me or for Rock School is that because we look at it from a performance point of view, basically when you do uh, when you do all this AR stuff or doing fingerboard and stuff, there's basically not much specific, specific adaptations uh, imposed demand. So, so you can't really get good uh, just by doing all these things. So actually, when we when I spoke to my youth team, I also told them that don't expect yourself to get stronger over this time just because you do a bit more push-up or a bit more pull-ups. 
Uh, but what we would want to try to do is to maintain your baseline fitness so that you struggle less when you return uh, back to the wall. So I think the reality is this. Uh, so uh, yeah, I mean, it's fun to do AR, it's fun to do uh, all the virtual stuff, but uh, in, from performance point of view, it's, it's challenging and it's tough. Uh. Right, I totally agree. I think right now is, uh, I mean, this is the era of also technology, but also the technology is actually helped to improve the user experience. And I, I, I can't imagine that how uh, doing just full doing uh, sitting on armchair can actually enhance the full climbing experience as compared to on top of the wall, like what uh, Jeremy has mentioned, right? So I would say that uh, I guess this uh, technology will also uh, go face by face, like instead of like a full uh, replacement or even a full fledged of uh, technology to replace the climbing experience, but it's really more working as an enhancement for the, to suit the human evolution as well. Yeah. So maybe. Uh, I'm not sure whether we can expect like some AR war from uh, both of your gym soon. Then I uh, for that for the climbers to climb soon. Yeah. Okay. So um, just now uh, Ellen actually you mentioned about your youth team, right? Talking about like doing push up and how they can uh, help them in their competition. So this led me to the questions about you know right. Uh, this this year was supposed to be the uh, Tokyo Olympics, right? And uh, this sports climbing supposed to this sports climbing supposed to make a debut uh, in the Olympics, but right now being postponed postponed to next year. I think July, the uh, end of July to eight of August, all right? So same goes to most of the competitions are uh, cancelled or even postponed, all right? Do you think this pandemic right will affect your youth team performance or even their morale? And also for, for maybe for Jeremy, right? I, I believe some there were a lot of the competitive athletes uh, were training in your gym before as well. So with that affecting their emotional morale and uh, the competition uh, for them to go for competition. Uh, maybe start with uh, Alan. Uh, okay. Uh... Yeah, so actually for Singapore calendar, uh, competition calendar, we only had graphical, right? If you remember in January. That's the only border comp that we had. And then after that, the rest of the year, and I don't foresee that we can have any more calls to end of the year. So basically for my team, right, competition, and uh, they basically, this year is the experience is burned now. So how we want to manage this is that uh, we want to basically make a lesson out of this with, to tell them that hey even though there's no competition you still need to be, re to be ready for one uh, you still need to be continued training because that is basically the, the underlying foundation and principle of being an athlete and being uh, being involved in competitive climbing right so it's not because you are driven by the competition yeah of course the competition does give some uh, motivation for at least to do better that's the training goals right but out of this, uh, how can we make best um, out of the situation? So I, I guess that's the lesson that we want to tell all our competitive climbers uh, right, right back at the, the rock school. Yeah. Got it, got it, got it. How about you, Jeremy? What, what's your perspective of this? Um, I'm not actually, I'm not the person in charge of the youth team of Camp 5. So uh, unfortunately, I, I don't have Alex or Patrick sitting next to me. Patrick's currently stuck in Colombia, and I don't know when he's going to be able to get back. Um, but I, I imagine it's been a bit of a demotivating hit because we we started our youth team just uh, last year, and um, and we just sort of got the ball rolling. So we're in the second season, and everyone was re getting really psyched. That we we could see the progress, we could see them improving, and then and then just this happened. So um, I could imagine. Uh, for a lot of the kids on the youth team, it might be a little bit hard to uh, weather the storm. But I think, again, that's when it comes down to just sort of lifting everyone's morale when the gym opens and getting everybody back in here again. Um, maybe that's an opportunity for gym owners to also, uh, since there won't be much national competitions, to actually sort of just do uh, a competition in your gym just to get everybody excited and get everybody climbing again. So, yeah. Yeah, I guess right now is the stage because we we also uncertain when is this uh COVID is gonna be over. So I guess right now uh, the only way is also to watch the climbing videos uh to get ourselves more up, inspiring us, get ourselves up, and also to all the uh newbies and also normal climbers as well to you know, get excited to go back to the gym to climb. So that's the one of the ways as well, right? Yeah. 
okay. I think it depends on the person. I, I, there's, I'm also a surfer, and there's nothing I hate worse than watching surfing videos when there's no waves. So, um, I'm not too sure. <laughs> I'm not too sure if watching climbing videos is going to keep your keep you positive or just make you more more depressed. <laughs> Yeah, correct, correct. That's like uh, based on perspective as well. Right. Okay, so right, we actually have questions. Uh, I guess it's a very concerned uh, climbers, right? He actually, you know, he loves to climb. So he's asking how are the gym owners uh, disinfect uh, their gyms, how, how frequent per day? And since there's evidence that the virus can stay contagious on the surface for several days. Maybe we can start with uh, Alan. Yeah, okay. Um, it will take some time for me to explain, so I'll just keep it short. Yeah. Uh, Rock School have the capability of disinfecting every single hole if we want to. Uh, but frankly speaking, it's not quite practical to do it every night uh, to disinfect the entire gym surface. Uh, so we are trying our best to probably shorten our road change, road, change, uh, road setting schedule so that the holes don't stay there for too long. That's one. Uh, number two, it has to start from the climber. Uh, if they can observe safety uh, hy uh, hygiene measures, I think that will lay off some uh, concerns about transferring uh, the disease to the wall itself, right? So, so before that, coming to the gym, I think the layers of safety measure have to be in place and have to be strictly done through, and then the second layer will come to the wall. So uh, having said that, the other general surface that we have, we do clean them on a twice a day basis, just like before circuit breaker, and we will continue to do that after reopening. Yeah, so that is as far as I can answer shortly. Thank you, thank yeah, you. Jer Jimmy, right, yeah. Yeah, Jimmy, yeah. So thank you for, for answering this as well. How about you, uh, Jeremy, what's your take about this? Yeah, I agree with uh, Len on this. Actually, um, there's been some, if you follow the WHO reports and CDC, there's been some discussion back and forth about um, the potential of actually catching COVID through contaminated surfaces. As far as I know and as far as I've read, there's no known case where that's happened. That's not to say that it's not possible, but it seems clear that the, the main vehicle for catching COVID is close proximity with somebody who's infected. Um, and from what we noticed, and going back to what I mentioned about this, the SOPs that we're, put, we're exploring uh, with the government um, to put in place is uh, when you look overseas and you look at the gyms that are open overseas, I know of no SOP that requires gyms to close and uh, to clean the entire facility. I think the practicality of that is um, just makes that somewhat a impossible task. Uh, I know that may not satisfy some people. Some people may not be comfortable with that. And I think everybody can make their own decision whether they are comfortable mm -hmm. or not. Um, what, what I mentioned before about us adopting uh, alcohol-based chalk is one way of addressing that concern. If you're using alcohol-based liquid chalk every time you're climbing, then effectively whatever you touched on that climb, uh, you've just hand sanitized yourself before the next climb. That would be the same as walking through a shopping aisle uh, in a supermarket and using hand sanitizer at the end of every mile after touching the products. So um, I think we have to be a bit realistic and a bit um, a bit reasonable with what we should expect from climbing gyms. Um, if you require climbing gyms to clean all the holds, well, that would be like requiring, again, supermarkets to take all their things off the shelf and sterilize them and put them back on the shelf before the next day and the next customers come in. I don't think supermarkets are doing that. Um, I think ultimately the best thing you can do is what you can do yourself, which is, like I said, wear a mask when you can. Uh, and I should mention wearing masks might be a requirement that uh, is re may be required for climbing gyms moving forward after the MCO. Um, and then just you know regularly cleaning your hands and staying away from people that aren't in your direct circle of friends. Oh man, I can't imagine we all wearing mask climbing on the wall, right? <laughs> all right, I'm going to stop here if you... <laughs> Sorry, it's, you not, it's, it's definitely not something that we would want to impose on climbers, but like I said, this is maybe something that is ultimately outside of our control. So if that becomes a requirement, if the decision of opening 
requires us to ask the customers to wear masks. Uh, I think most customers will just uh, you know, accept that that's just the requirement for that period of time. Again, I think the important thing is to remember that everything that we're doing moving forward will be temporary. Um, for how long, I don't know, but there will come a day when we'll be able to take the mask off and be able to hug a stranger again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's hope that day will come as well, as soon as possible. Yeah, I mean, like Li Ming and Vishnu is giving virtual hugs to you all as well right now. Yeah, because human being, we are, we all are, so, I mean, most are like social. Like, uh, we social are we're social, we're social creatures and, and climbing, I think one of the aspects of climbing which makes it so enjoyable is the social aspect. So when we take that away from climbing, um, uh, that's not to say that the experience is diluted, but I think for some people, it's going to be um, quite an impact to have to go to a climbing gym and not get to hang out with a group of friends on the boulder mat, you know? Um, so I think, but st again, stay positive. <laughs> Yeah, um, let's stay positive. Yeah, <laughs> hope things are no more smoothly, and then and then uh, and then maybe we can no need to wear masks. <laughs> yeah, let's hope that will come. Okay, All right. So so lift up everybody's mood a bit. Uh, for those who actually just join and also people who are new to climbing, let me also like summary up. Uh, because right now it's nine o'clock. Okay, summary up this. Uh, and also introduce uh share about uh Camp Five. So Camp Five is uh we have Jeremy over here. He's the owners of Camp Five, and Camp Five is actually the largest. Asia's largest uh, indoor climbing gym and also the home to Malaysia's uh, tallest indoor wall. Okay, a climbing place that's suitable for beginner, advanced, and pro climber. It has over five gyms in KL and also in J uh, JP, one in JP, and one is actually opening soon in KL East. All right, so uh, it, just to, for, for your information, even the climbing uh, legend Chris Sharma has climbed their pro wall before in the one of Sama. Yeah, I, I hope to be able to see him, I mean, like, see him climb again in Camp 5. Yeah, because I missed that. Okay, so they are also, Camp 5 also listed in the route list and certified with the certificate of excellence by TripAdvisor 2015. So whether you are in Singapore or in Malaysia, let's give them our support to go to experience their climbing facilities once this uh, pandemic is over. Okay, Jeremy, is there anything that I missed and you would like to add on to share from uh, Camp 5? Um, oh, I think I've covered everything, but maybe just a final shout out I want to actually say to my staff, because I know that this has been a very trying period for my staff. Um, there's been a lot of sacrifices. We've all had to make sacrifices. And, uh, and I just, uh, I, any staff that's listening right now, I want to thank you for sticking with us through this challenge. And we uh, will endeavor to get through it together. And we look forward to having that day that we can reopen and have everybody, but maybe not everybody at one time, in one place, social distancing. But I'm looking forward to seeing the faces again. Right. Thank you, all the lovely staff as well. I miss the staff and the uh, confined are so friendly. All right. So to shout out for the Rock School, all right, for those who yet to know, Rock, the Rock School is actually Singapore's leading and fastest growing climbing, climbing community. And uh, Singapore, they are located in both uh, Bedok and Tampanese. Okay, so the Tampanese one is actually at uh, OTH, right, on one Tampanese hub. Okay, so the Rock School actually champions the youth development through their love for rock climbing. So each of every one of their trainers aim to help young climbers, right, improve their skills, refine their techniques, and take their climbing to the next level. So the Rock School is also a climbing place, right, that is family and kids friendly. So the COVID 19, right, uh, if you after COVID-19, right, if you feel like you're bringing your kids and family to climb, you can definitely visit the rock school. Their hands are so friendly and uh, it's easy to climb for. It's friendly for kids as well. All right. So anything to add on, uh, Alan? Did I share it well for you? <laughs> uh, yeah. So inspired by Jeremy. So I just want to thank uh, the entire staff group from rock school, uh, our youth team and uh, the entire community. I think uh like what the shirt says trust the process uh we have to trust what our government is trying to do uh towards safe opening uh and we have to trust uh what the staff in the rock school uh can best decide for climbers to come back safely lah. okay so i hope to see everyone uh back at the school as well uh, back at the gym so uh, so this is for everyone out there thanks so much for listening in thanks so much for all this uh one and a half months for all your support uh, I'm waving support seriously uh, in terms of uh, more uh, virtually or financial means. I think thanks so much. Yeah.
Right, thank you so much. Wow, you have a lot of fan sales, so cool. Okay, so I also want to take this chance also to thank Camp 5 and The Rock School for giving us an exclusive discounts for the entry pass right to our members to encourage everyone to go to climb. So MOA will probably, will, will, after COVID, we definitely will like to organize some events to visit your gym soon and right, to gather everybody from climbing uh, community to join us as well. And also good news to all the members. Uh, if you sign up as our members, right, just you know, not just get to have a care package, right, which consists of our virtual card that you can access uh, the perks from uh, Camp 5 and the Rock School. You also get to have lifetime access to the workout cheat sheets and videos from us. So just to send a QR code uh, and click in our chat box to find out more. Right, to so encourage everybody to support the sports industry in this pandemic, you just need to pay like $2 to get hold of this benefit as well. And I like what Jeremy has shared with me earlier on, right? It's like how we belay each other as the climbers, right? We watch out for each other. Okay, so let's hope that uh, this crisis uh, can end soon and we can keep the dream together. Right, so uh, actually we're coming to the end. I actually wanted to, to share with both of you that we, our climbing community have come up with uh, something special for you both. And I'm not sure whether uh, you all have seen it. It's not just, I mean, other than just for you both and also for the whole climbing team as well. All right, so can we have that video to show uh, both of them and also to the audience and all the climbing owners, climbing gym owners that you're watching? All right, so while we are waiting, please like and share the post. All right, so please like uh, Ten Five and also the Rock School page as well. I already missed climbing so much. I have no idea how I'm going to get through one month of not climbing. With the recent COVID situation, all the gym have to close for one month. It will be very tough because climbing is part of our life. So I guess like many other climbers in Singapore, we haven't been able to go to the gym in a while. This is temporal and once everything back to normal, the gym will be even better than before. I hope the climbing industry and community can work together and just die no through all these challenges. I think that all of us are rooting for you guys. Be strong, stay safe and hope to be back and stay on the wall soon. I know it has been hard for all of you. I think um, this is also a good chance for us to take a rest. When this whole thing blows over, let's all go to the gym and climb it back. I'll see you in the table too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all that you have done. Right, so I hope you both like the video. Yeah, so Thank this you. is something that is both like like we put in our effort right to, to get that. Actually there's two videos, so today we just showcase one of because of time constraint. Yeah. So so we hope that uh you all can also can successfully open your gym soon and so that more of the climbers uh can go and climb. Yeah. So for those uh, audience who are watching, right, even you are not climber or you are climbers, right? Please also please when gym is open, right, please feel free to visit them and also uh, just experience what they have. You will love it. You probably will love it. Bring your friends and family as well. All right. So with that, uh, I want to, uh, is there anyone, anything that you would like to share to the audience, uh, to Alan and Jeremy? Okay, maybe oh. Jeremy start first. Sorry, uh, Jeremy okay. start first. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, well, I just like to say, uh, Evelyn, thanks for inviting me onto the show. It's been uh, awesome to have this opportunity to reach out to the climbing community. And um, and I, I've been following the comments, and I hope we actually managed to answer these questions and we gave uh, answers that people can do. I'm happy to come back and climb. Like I said, this is um, that we're, we're in the eye of a storm right now, and it's very hard when you're in the center of a storm to sort of see the bright, sunny days is ahead of us. So I think the most important thing is just when we have those often when they, when the doors open on those climbing gyms, please just you know show up in numbers. Obviously, controlled numbers. There's a capacity limit, but show up and show your support. And uh, and if we all can all do that, I think we can all get through this, and uh, and one day be enjoying the climbing we once enjoyed. Um, so yeah, stay strong, stay uh, hygienic wash your hands, wear a mask, social distance, all of that, because if those numbers start to go back up, then um, that might not be the path that we end up getting. Thank you so much, Jeremy. Yeah, I guess a lot of Singaporeans here, we can't wait to go to visit Malaysia soon. Yeah, stay positive, everybody. How about you, Ellen? Anything you'd like to share to your audience as well? Uh, 
Um, so thanks, thanks, uh, MOA and Evelyn and the whole team to invite me on this show. So uh, yeah, when we reopen, I really hope to see not just kids, but adults as well to visit our gym. Um, and yeah, I'll come and uh, climb again and don't give up on us as well. <laughs> yeah, because this is a tough period for everyone and I hope to see everyone back at the wall. Right, right, right. Thank you both of you for your time also to share your climbing experience and also maybe, your maybe, uh, you maybe just to add to this, if COVID has taught us anything, it's taught us a lot, I think, but it's important to take care of your health. So whether that's through climbing or another vehicle, stay healthy. Right, right. Stay safe, stay healthy and take care. Right. So thank you all for joining me. Thank you both of you for joining uh, us. It's my honor to host you today. So allow me to also send you to the backstage because we're coming to the end of the show. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye. All right. So for those who are watching, thank you for watching. And also uh, thank you for your time as well. We hope, we hope that uh, you learned a lot from today. And don't go yet. We actually have our bonus game that we will not announce. And uh, before that, I want to shout out to those who are still staying. And uh, and uh, please also, uh, if you are still staying, please type bonus, okay? Because I can't see you if you don't uh, shout out and you don't type bonus, okay? I want to really, really be taking, uh, take care, uh, really like, take note of this and really want to thank you for that. Okay, so uh, let's also give our support to, to, yes, thank you, Jimmy, also. Let's give our support to the climbing gym as well, okay? So I know that today's session is a bit slightly heavy, uh, but it's like I, I feel I hope that you all can also feel the heartwarming and uh, and positivity from them as well. Okay, so as pro as promised, we would like to review our bonus gift at the end of the show. So if you are here, please type bonus. Okay, please type bonus if you are here. Let me see who we have. Okay, and uh, well before I start, okay, we have uh Ling Chi Lin as well, Li Ming, Vishnu, Pingo, and Ifao. Jimmy, Neil, no, and Shrikan, thank you for sharing. Okay, so you are here, right? I want to review this to you. Okay, can we have a bonus gift? Oh, yes. We actually have our climbing technique video tutorial from Jimmy, and then uh, it's the outer edge video. So this is like, a, you know, you can watch at home and also uh, get yourself from to find out about the climbing skills as well. And the best thing, right, is that we have climbing Zoom workout with Beatrice tomorrow at 8 30. Okay, so come and join us. There's some fingers training as well for climbers so that we all are ready when the world, the, the gym, and the world are ready for us to climb, right? We can all like slash the wall. Okay, so if you are here, right, please go and DM your claim, uh, your bonus gift. Okay, so that this is, uh, I mean, this is some gift for you. I thank you for sharing, uh, staying with us to the end. Okay, please remember to DM us, okay, to claim your gift. Okay, so I want to also to quickly shout out for the next week. Okay, so basically next week, right, will be the last episode for our sports night. Okay, so uh, I have invited like my dear friend from the school race uh, to share about it because right now I know that a lot of people are forced to uh, run at home. I mean, like uh, to run instead of uh, not run at home, I run outside. Uh, so because we can't do climbing, right? We can't do swimming. So right now, this virtual run and how it's actually something that is booming. Okay, so how is this uh virtual run usually sent out in the pandemic? Well, I want to share this also because they recently just did a charity event uh, with the government in Kaohsiung, and also got about eight hundred eight hundred uh participants uh, with the to do this virtual race. And Mark Lee, okay, our our video called Archery Stars actually is one of the ambassadors. Okay, so uh, they, they managed to pull off uh, from this pandemic to get people to be excited to run together and also to be positive as well. All right, so there's definitely a lot more exciting things that uh, obviously, which is my guest speaker, we're going to share. So just, please do join us next week if you have our last episode, okay? And also, but now your calendar is on 5th June, 8 p.m. All right, so I hope to see you there. Bye! Thank you for your time. Have a good weekend. Bye.